on a couple things? Yeah, so the first thing, um, just want to wish um, Dave Rubio and the volleyball team good luck for today to beat UCLA at 2 o'clock. So hopefully we pack the house for that. And Tony Amato, great job with soccer. Um, just congrats on a great season. And I know there's a lot going on this week, but um, Kevin Summon, the football team, hopefully we can go beat the Sun Devils. Um, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Also, I'm sure, as you guys are aware, um, very sad news today with Judith Blair, the passing of Judith Blair. Um, so deepest condolences to the Blair family. And she's going to be someone that was just kind of iconic around here, um, just a huge supporter and uh, followed everything. And she was just at the game last week and had a chance to talk to her when I was in Montana. So just really, you know, just something that we didn't expect, obviously. So very, very sad to hear about that. And what um, did uh, Judith mean to you and the program? Um, she just meant a lot. She just really supported everything we do. She was so passionate about um, women's basketball. She was just a big supporter of me ever since I was a player. And, you know, I've had a relationship with jo Joseph since I was 17. We went to college together for a couple of years, so known her since then. Um, and she just came to everything. She always, you know, she brought the mayor to a game and she would um, challenge the fans to come support us and just really was a huge advocate for women's basketball. And um, just someone who loved, felt like part of the family. And, you know, even going through what she's going through, she was behind our bench still yelling at the refs. Um, you know, so she's just really, really going to truly be missed. So what is it like for you to have your team finally in the AP poll for the first time in 15 years? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's a long time. That's way too long. But really, it's awesome. I think it's just a tribute to um, how much this program's changed and the hard work that our players have put in. And I think that, you know, you, you don't want to get too high or too low ever. So just kind of saying this, this is just the beginning. I feel like we've just scratched the surface. Um, I felt like there was we should have probably been in a little bit sooner, but... You know, who knows? You can't control those things. It's not the most important thing to us, you know, because right now, it doesn't matter how you're ranked in Kandria, and I talked about this, it doesn't matter what you're ranked in the beginning, it matters what you're ranked in the end. So it's kind of meaningless until all the stuff, because we're going to have a really, um, you know, rude awakening in a month. It's really different. So the, I guess the challenge will be staying in there. You've gotten off to a, a quick start, 6-0, and, and and each team that you've beaten, you've beaten pretty large. Um, uh, by uh, I think tw almost 30 points each game. Um, what do you think um, is attributing to that? I know that, um, I, what do you think is attributing well, to that? Well, I think the first thing is we've gotten off to really strong starts. So we've really had, first five minutes, we've kind of came out the gates really going. And I think that's a key. Um, the challenge is, in the past, we'd be okay in the first five minutes. We call it, we play wars. So we play five-minute increments of games within games. Um, and we've sometimes went off, you know, started, on slow, started off slowly. And then our third quarter was like the, the quarter that we just weren't good at. And so I think we've addressed that. We're a lot better. Um, I think for, from what we finished with and had momentum, so winning NIT was huge. We don't talk about it a lot anymore because we just have bigger goals. But that gave us momentum. It made everybody hungry, and the WNIT isn't good enough. So I think it made everybody have some accountability to get better. So I think that's kind of helped our success early. Kate's improved. Aries improved. Um, Sam Thomas has improved. She's way more efficient. She is a three-point shooter now and someone who can post up. Before, she could shoot the three, but she wasn't a three-point shooter. Um, Kate now can shoot the three consistently. Dominique, her body looks amazing. She's in the best shape of her career. So all those things, but I think that came from the success at the end of the year last year. What about on the road? Um, you guys are phenomenal on the road and early now. Is that? I know, knock on wood, don't jinx me. <laughs> is, it, is it the added depth? Is it the talent? Is it a different mindset? All of the above. So it's the added depth for sure, because we're not asking Ari and Sam and Dominique and Kate to play 38 minutes a game, which you're not going to be as good defensively or as efficient offensively if you do that. Um, that's one thing. I think the other thing is just a lot of confidence. Um, and I don't know, I think it's just a combination of all those things. And just adding, we added some experience with Amari. And then we have someone like Helena, who's shooting like 60% from the three, coming in off the bench. So when you have those things, I think it's just, it spreads the floor more, it makes the lanes more open for Aries. So I think just a combination of all those things. How do you describe Helena's game? Smooth. You know, at first, um, I think sometimes 
I think sometimes people can think like it's not playing hard. It's not that. It's just her demeanor and her game. Um, I think she's deceptive. I think she's a lot better defensively than I thought. Because in Europe, I would say, okay, she needs to play a little bit better defense. But she's she's playing defense and she's playing really good defense. She's long. She's more athletic than she looks. Um, she can handle the ball pretty well. And her shot is just her shot is amazing. A three point shot with her fe feet set is like a layup. So I like that, um, and she can do so much more. So it's funny because you'll watch her; she'll make like a really nice crossover, then euro step or do something, and you're like, "Where'd that come from?" And then she'll have she's a great passer, so she'll have no look passes. And there's not too many guards in the in the country that are six foot that can shoot the three at such a, a high percentage, and that can do so many other things. She's going to be a really good player. Remember my quote, I think earlier was she's going to be a star in the Pac-12, and she will be. And how does that help, uh, Ari? Also can shoot and space the floor for her as well. It helps a lot. I think it helps because if you remember last year when we played, there would be you know ten feet in the paint. Um, everybody was collapsing. Even if they played man, it looked like it was a zone. You remember when we played Stanford, everybody was in the key. They were like, go ahead and shoot. And I think this year it's just a little bit harder. And hopefully we'll be, well, hopefully we'll shoot the three as well as we've been. Um, I, last game wasn't great, but if we shoot the three consistently, I think it's going to be harder to even guard Ari. And now we have more people that can shoot the three. Amari is a good three-point shooter. She just hasn't shot it that great lately. Sam Thomas is shooting. I mean, she's missed one shot in two games. Um, Kate can shoot the three now. Dominique is shooting the three consistently. And Helena, and then that's not including Tara, you know, Berna, Bryce. Everybody pretty much can shoot the three on our team, even Cheval. And you're at like the 36% mark, which I think was the number that you wanted to be at. It was a number, and I do want a little higher than that. <laughs> I just wasn't going to say if we were 29, I was like, oh, we're not going to be 40, so let me be a little realistic. I think we could probably be 38%. Um, you know, I hope, and I hope it can stay that way. Now, defending the three-point line is another story, but um, yeah, so that 36, that was a number. Yeah, you reminded me of that. And um, defensively, what would you say your, your principles are? <laughs> like just as a, just a philosophy? Um, so we want to break the timing of the offense. So I, I can see when I watch film, if we're playing good defense, that the ball isn't just going around the perimeter. If that's the case, we're not playing good defense, we're, we're reacting after. If we're proactive and playing the way I want to play, we are making them catch it beyond the three-point line. We're not pressuring really far out unless we're in a full court situation. But, um, and then breaking the timing, not allowing easy passing angles. So by catching it further from the three, you don't have direct passes into the post because we're not that big. Um, it just makes everything a lot easier. And then aggressive, where we're dictating the tempo. Um, our defense is creating our offense. When I wanted to play a little faster, I knew that two years ago I wanted to play faster, but then we just, how are you going to play fast? So if you're not getting stops and you're not controlling the boards, you can't play fast. So I just said, okay, well, if I want to play fast, we have to get back to that blue collar, tough, aggressive defense because we can, we can score more points by getting steals. And so that's one thing. So now we're really good in transition. We're really good at getting stops and steals. And then it leads to fast break points. So that's really helped us a lot. Where did you, like, why, why did you take on that philosophy as opposed to, did you play in that style? I did like play in that style. So Joan, um, in a, on a couple teams, with Joan we pressed for 40 minutes. I was on top of the press. We pressed the whole game long. We were aggressive. Um, you know, and then as a player, Brian Agler, Lynn Dunn, very good defensive coaches. So I thought of the, the things and philosophies I liked from all the coaches I played for for 20 years, 13 pro, then college, and different teams. And I kind of took a little bit of what everybody had. Um, I didn't so much want that body in the passing lane. I didn't want that, but I wanted something more aggressive than the pack line. When I was at Washington, um, we did the pack line, but you have to have a really um, – you know, you have to be bigger, and you have to be able to control the boards, and you play percentages. And we couldn't do that here and manufacture more points. So we weren't going to control the boards. We weren't big, so that wasn't the style. And then with a player like Ari, I wanted the style to be aggressive because she, she's the catalyst for that. And then now, so now it's kind of changed a little bit recruiting what I'm looking for. So adding shooters, but then having athleticism like Ari next year, Shayna. With Ari and Shayna together, it's a chance to be one of the best backcourts in the country and extremely um, effective defensively. So just kind of, I think the first thing was how do we score more and run more if we don't, you know, get stops or steals. And I think that's what created, it's created a lot of offense because we're scoring the ball pretty well. I know that you had, uh, you had concerns uh, about boxing out of the rebounding, but it does look like it has improved a lot. It has. Well, you guys remember last year at the beginning of the year, it was like a, it was a struggle. I and mean, we've worked on it, but we're also 
a little bit, we have more depth, obviously, more size, so that helps. So Helena on the perimeter, because when I play Helena and Sam, that's two six foot guards. And then, um, you know, Cheval inside gives us depth inside. Samaje is better. So all those things are factors for it, too. How does Helena fit in on your defense? I mean, she has a presence that's a little different. When she alters shots, it looks different than when, like, Sam alters shots or, or Dominique or someone else. Yeah, she's a solid defensive player. And I, and I wouldn't have thought that at first. Even all the times I watched her in Europe and studied her on film, I thought she was okay defensively. She's much better working on the things we've worked on now and a being able to apply them so fast and I thought she would be I thought it would take her a couple of years because I didn't think she had the um, want to play defense because I thought I think defense is a lot about a, a mentality um, but she wants it she's working on it she's working extra on her own we always talk about in our program what's one more so one of her one mores was working on defense and that's really wasn't anybody else's one more it's all working on offense or doing stuff like that but she takes pride in it, and she's, she alters shots. She deflects a lot of shots. I mean, some games she's had seven steals. So she's just using her length, and she's very, very smart. So she knows when to give a little bit of space. And, um, you know, I always talk to her about she's going against Aerie every day and going against Shayna, some really good guards. So she's getting better every day. If, if you can stay in front of Aerie and you can successfully get some stops against her, you're going to be able to guard a lot of guards in our league. Do you have any, like, targeted percentages for defense in terms of opponent field goal percentage? Uh, not yet, because I'm still, I, I want to see, you know, we've played Texas, but I think I'll have more of a, more of a, like, like, well, so, so the thing is also for me is um, getting that consistent rotation. So some of the numbers are skewed a little bit because we've played a lot of people in non-conference. And so there's not a soon in like a month, there's not going to be too many situations where we play 13. Um, right now we've been able to, so I think I'll know more and I think our numbers will be a little bit better. We're going to defend the three a little bit better. We're not doing that great right now. Um, I think we'll rebound a little bit better because we won't have so many different rotations in. But right now we're trying to figure out exactly what that rotation is and you know who are those top eight, eight players because I'm really comfortable playing eight, nine players and things can change with fouls. But it's very hard to manage playing 13 players. It's, it's not easy and I don't feel like a lot of players get into a rhythm. What do you think that um, Shayna brings from her uh, national team experience? She just played in the pre-qualifying round and, um, you know, played a lot of minutes. Um, she had, she was tied for the lead and, and assists for the three games. Mm -hmm. um, she really had an impact on that team. What does she bring from that to, for you? Well, what I've noticed is um, she has a lot more confidence. Just, you know, going there. And that was one of those things I allowed her to go. Um, you know, she missed a week of school. And, you know, we talked about her taking care of business here and doing the right things, and she did all those things. And so I was more than happy to support her in going because I think it's, it's awesome to be the only U of A player to play with the national team and have a chance to make an Olympic team as a college athlete. That's, that's really incredible. In basketball, it's, it's like unheard of. Um, so... I think that she brings back um, more of a sense of urgency, knowing that she has to get better at certain things. Um, she's a lot more confident. I think she's a lot more focused. So I think it's helped her narrow her focus and just kind of see where she wants to be and the things she wants to work on. Because as soon as she got back, we talked about a few things that she needs to expand. And I think she's more bought into really focusing on those things because she's got a great opportunity. And it's not for sure yet. But in February, um, she'll have a chance to go play with the team again. Then hopefully she'll make the Olympic team. So I think that's amazing. And it's great for our program, too. So I, I for sure support that. With the, uh, with the better three-point and outside shooting that this team has this year, do you still expect to see a lot of zone in confidence? Um, well, a lot of times the man looked like zone. <laughs> so it was man, but it was zone. Um, I think so. And the reason why I say that, because I think it's going to be pick your poison. So we're, I think we're pretty tough in transition. Um, Aerie's really good in transition. So I think a lot of times it's going to be a way to slow down Aerie and then pick your, pick your poison. So I think um, you either can let Aerie, or, or do you have the philosophy like let Aerie score 40 points, you know? Um, I don't know. I think she's becoming, well, I don't know. Us, us shooting the ball better, I think it should give teams a harder time going to that so fast. But that doesn't mean that playing percentages, if someone's at a lower percentage, I think you would probably be more heavy in the lanes with that player versus seeing so much 2-3. Because we're pretty, we're pretty good against the zone. 
So if you see how we move the ball and penetrate, or if you can, allowing you to get in the zone, because we can, we're, we're scoring off of transition makes right now. I mean, we're scoring transition buckets off of makes. So I think um, I'm, I'm hoping we don't face as much zone because of that. But I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see what teams are going to do. Because like against Texas, they, we were, Ari was hot. She was playing well. She was driving against everything. They were throwing different on-ball defenses at her. And then they went to zone, but then Helena hit a three, Sam hit a three, so he took him out of the zone. So I think it's, it's going to be harder. And also, those two guards, if they continue to shoot at 60% or high 50s, it's hard to play a zone because Aerie is still in the 30s. So then I think it's even, it's even harder to go zone. So hopefully they'll continue that. With the improvement um, that you're talking about, all the, the players have made it at, at the three-point line, is that just like a natural progression type of thing? Do you guys change any drills that you, you do? No, we didn't. I mean, well, so what I, I focused on a little bit more this year um, is just so early in the season every year we do a lot of skill work. And, the on, you know, off-season we always do skill work. But I made sure that, like, almost every day we have skill work built into practice. Before we did that a couple of days a week, but that's really helped. And I think we've shot the ball a lot better. And, like, say the first hour, I'll have 30 minutes of skill work. So that's sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, that's sometimes – position similar kids so like if two kids are both like let's say Bryce and Tara good three-point shooters don't need to you know are working on guard guard skills or on ball stuff they'll go together um, then the post will go together maybe two maybe three and maybe Samaje by herself and then there will be 30 minutes of that and 30 minutes of shooting where it's like time charted I think all those things have played a, a role in our success and so I'm doing that like we're doing that almost every day and like the confidence bit, I'm sure it's yeah just, just if you're getting and also I tell them if you're getting an extra thousand shots a week or if you're getting 500 shots a week, that's a lot, but it's charted. So what I think is more effective than just going out and taking shots, we're charting everything. So you can see you're either first or you're 14th. So you're, if you're 14th, you're probably going to want to be, you know, not 14th anymore. So um, so I think it puts a little bit of pressure and, and just more accountability. Is that part of the, part of the earn the A program? No, they're in the A. You had to earn your gear because, you know, all the kids love gear. So earn the A, I think that, that was another um, thing that Candrea did for years. And um, I'm someone that's, if there's someone in this building that's phenomenal, and, you know, we have, I have a lot. There's Sean down the hall who I talk to, and there's Candrea, who's won more games than I'll probably ever dream of. Like, I don't mind picking his brain. So I've got, I've got great ideas from him, and his, his thing was earn the A. And so I tweaked it a little bit, made it our own, and it was very effective and very helpful. So. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. So what does it feel like to be ranked? I mean, I think it's a great feeling for us, although it's like it's still early in the season, like and we still have a lot of games to go. I mean, it's nice and it's great to show that like our hard work is paying off. But it's it's still like you have to win and be successful in order to stay ranked. So we have to stay focused on that. With your early success this year compared to years past, <laughs> What's different about it as far as practice goes? Um, I mean, I think it's kind of the same. I think practices are a little more intense that they, than they have been like last season. I think we've had a lot more intense practices. Um, but I mean, overall, I think our practices are still run the same. Like we work on the same stuff. Although I think there's different things that we work on compared to last year. I think that we um, have picked up on stuff that we didn't as early as we did last year. So. What would you guys say are the staples of your team <coughs> in terms of like this, the types of tactics that you guys use? Um, I would say we like to try and switch it up on teams. We don't like to do the same thing every single game. So every game we're working on something new. We're always preparing for the Pac-12 because we have a bunch of ranked teams we have to play against. So we're practicing stuff that we're going to do against those teams on teams here to see how it works out. and. We're just trying to, you know, man-to-man, -man zone, play soft, play in the gaps, play deny fully. We're just testing it all out. Yeah, I'd say we definitely go, like, game by game. Like, it's not, like, it's not going to be the same every game, what we're working on defensively. Um, what are you guys able to do on that end of the floor this year that you weren't able to do last year? Um, like Kate said earlier, I think we're picking up on things more faster, so we're able to work on – different rotations in the game that like different groups that work together with different five people in and out. Everyone pretty much knows what the goal is, what they're doing on defense, our defensive principles. So it's easier to get people in and out and just test the waters and see what's going to work. And Sam, what do you like about just the, 
I know you guys press a lot. What do you like about that, mm -hmm. that style? <laughs> um, I think it just really gets like the energy going up. Like you're not going to get a steal every time, but if you get a tip on it or you actually do steal the ball, like it just really hypes you up and the team up, and it just really gets you going. What would you say are your defensive principles? Um, we just like to we work on don't get beat one on one. Take pride in your defense. Um, if you happen to do get beat, we like to help each other's team. Trust your teammates. Know that they're going to be behind you and help side. Yeah, I'd say we also work on like guard your yard. Um, and like she said, like not forcing the opponent to the middle and then boxing out, which we've been struggling on, but we're working on that. So. So what exactly is guard your yard? Is that more? Like yeah, it's like it's for it's for zone and man, but it's just like guarding like your player and like not having to get into rotation and like moving everyone. So I mean, it's just mainly like trying to stay on your man and like not having to get other people to help you. How has uh, having more depth helped you on that side of the floor too? I mean, in practice, it definitely helps too because like we can push each other a little bit more and it's more competitive. But in the game, it's nice to know that like you have people that can come off the bench and like help you and then not really have like the momentum decline or like the playing decline. You feel that uh, with the depth that you feel a lot fresher in the fourth quarter than maybe last year? Um, yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, we usually get, we sub, as you see in the games, like we sub pretty early on to get new fresh legs. And we have a lot of freshmen, young, full of energy. So it's nice to get them in and really pick up the defense intensity. So then we're not playing the whole first half and then we're tired in the fourth half. We really can balance our energy. What do you think that you've been seeing in these first uh, six games? Now you're going into your seventh game. Uh, on, uh, on, you know, offensively, what are you seeing from other teams that you think will help you in the Pac-12? Uh, you know, the other team's defense. Um, well, obviously, we have Ari, driver, really fast. So we're seeing a lot of, like, um, zone type man where everyone's just staying in the paint making us sh out shoot them to win the game so I think that really helps us because that's probably what teams in the Pac-12 are going to do or like they're going to try a bunch of different things box one triangle and two zone us man us they're going to try a bunch of different things so it's nice that we're having teams now and non-conference do it so we can work on it and prepare and practice and work on stuff in the games to really try and do it better than what they're going to do. <laughs> thought about the, the way you guys have shot the three you're up six percent from last year i think it's great i think we have a lot more people that can shoot the three consistently than we did last year um i mean just like a lot of the freshmen have come in and stepped up in the games like tara has done really well elena has done really well like we just have we have more players that can shoot the three like i said consistently so it's definitely helpful for us because then if like sam said that the de if the defense is going to sag in the middle then they're going to have to come out now because we have people that will shoot Uh, we love Helena. <laughs> she's done amazing. She's, I think she's really come out of her shell personally, which really shows on the court her coming out even more these past couple of games. She's had really good games. She's consistent. She brings like the European style to our game. So we're just super proud of her and we hope she just keeps growing. Yeah, we kind of asked a lot of her at the beginning of the season. Like she, we thought she could give more than what she was giving and she definitely like proved to us that she is a great player and she stepped, like Sam said, she stepped out of her shell and yeah, she's, she's done great in these games so we're definitely expecting a lot from her for the season when you say european style what exactly <laughs> <is that> <laughs> it's just she looks like she's not like she doesn't look like she's not an airy she's not gonna like dribble behind the back break you down but then she will like yeah. she'll just be like just standing there and then all of a sudden she's gone and you miss her and it happens to me all the time in practice <laughs> when i'm guarding her <laughs> Coach Barnes will say one time that her threes are like layups. So <laughs> what do you just make of the way that she's been shooting the ball so far? Yeah, um, she's doing amazing. We always try and force her to take layups, actual layups in practice, because we know her threes are just so consistent. So the only way we can beat her is to make her take a layup. But she somehow always manages to get the threes, so she's really working on it. Yeah, and I noticed on defense in that last game, it was kind of, the picture was kind of grainy. But um, she had a lot of, um, what you guys do a lot, you alter shots. Um, and, and it seemed like those players weren't ready for her presence. I think it's just like she'll be behind the person and because she has that extra length for a guard, like she'll just come behind you and like block you. Like you think you have the layup and then she's right there like behind you blocking you. So I think it's just like her extra length and her quickness gives her like the extra like, I don't know, like 
little thing that like helps her to still deflect shots or alter shots even if she's behind them and I think that really helps too just because like people will not want to go to the lane as much if she like she's guarding them because she'll alter their shot. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.